Off-season outlaws, Terry. I love off-season outlaws. Let's talk some cricket. I hate cricket. No, it's not quite right. Try again. Yeah, how's that? That's good to me. Nice cricket shirt. Thank you. Hey everyone, welcome back to Off Season Outlaws, special cricket edition. Now as we saw earlier, I banished Terry for crimes against the gentleman's game and brought in a ringer, my good mate Stegs, thanks for coming on. Dan, lovely to be here, great to talk about the upcoming summer. Mate, before we get down to business, and we got some serious business, let's just check on how Terry's doing. Sirs, you right. Now, Stegs, we know December 5, the Ashes, all starts at the Gabba. We are going to pick an Aussie 11 to retain the urn against the best that England has to offer. Or can poach from other nations. That's, look, it's a very good point. Now, let's uh, let's save a little bit of time. Are there any players who go in that absolutely need no explanation? Well, I can think of probably half a dozen. We'll, we'll put Warner in at number one to open. That's it. Davey Warner in good form in the T20. Uh, we've probably got Lava Skadney, or let's put Marnus. I'm going to say Marnus because we'll be here all night. I'm going to say I'm going to say Smithy. So yeah, Smithy, easy. In we go. Uh, Payne with the gloves at seven. At seven, all right. Timmy Payne, no, uh, no love for Matty Wade. Uh, not Edwards, is the hand snake. Fair, fair call. Uh, Cummins at eight. Cummins at eight. Genuine all rounder. Uh, probably got Lyon at 10. Look, I'm going to go Lyon at 10. You're not going to get any arguments for the GOAT. And, and I'm going to go Joshy Hazelwood. I'm going to go Hoff because I always get the Zs and the Ls around the long way. Now, look, there's yeah. one player here that I want to lock in. Yeah, but yeah. Um, everyone's favourite leg spinner turned DM fiend, Shane Warne, has argued otherwise. Mitchell Stark. I don't have a problem. Well, good. Here's Espe- one. Especially in Brisbane. Look, we need something different. You need a left arm. You need to change that lineup. Yeah. Gets the foot marks going for the GOAT on day four and five. I don't think you know, there's anything wrong with that. Those, no argument from me, and I'm not taking any arguments from you either. Mate, the opening position now, Wolpikovsky's the obvious one, but there's every chance he won't be available. Look, I don't think he's even going to make that practice match uh, at the start of the month. Uh, so it really comes down to two options. Uh, You've got people talking about Kawaja, even though he's been batting at four for Queensland. You've got people talking about Marcus Harris as well. Comes off a really good season in England, playing for Leicestershire. That's true. Uh, getting some good runs there. My leaning is towards Harris. I think you hear George Bailey talk on the weekend uh, about that, and I think he's been lined up as the next to go. And he probably is the next in line, realistically. Look, it's not about shout. We heard Tim Payne come out and say, look, he's probably the one you're looking to. Look, Usman Khawaja was the one I originally had in. Uh, you know, he got, he got amongst the runs recently in the Shield. Uh, but Harris, you know, Kawaja, I feel like his time may have come and gone. Are we happy to put Harris in? I'd be putting Harris there. Let's put Harris in. Any love for Sean Marsh before I put this in? If it wasn't for the calf strain that he's just uh, suffered, maybe, but probably not. Well, look, number five, for me, is the most open spot of them all. Yeah. Who have you got there? Well, this is where Kawaja comes in for me. So he's been playing in the middle order for Queensland. It's a spot that Australia often has had difficulties with. And someone who has batted top three in tests, it's got that sort of temperament that probably is good for five. So I'd be leaning towards Uzi at five. No arguments. Again, Marsh will come up. For me, I think we've got to move past. There's thoughts of playing two all-rounders. I saw someone mention this earlier because the Gabba is going to move, the ball's going to move early. But if England get in, it could be a slog. You know, Cam, Cameron Green is one I'm thinking more at six. Five, you could be playing Marsh and, and Green. But just for me, you need, you need the runs. You need a, a batsman, someone who can dig in and face 100 balls. Because there's every chance, if all goes well, that he's facing the second new ball when he comes in. Yeah, and Green almost gets his spot as a bat alone. That's true. He plays it really well. The difficulty for that all-rounder spot for him is the inability he had against India to pick up wickets. True, true. And that's, I think, where some of the talk about Mitch Marsh coming in uh, gets its strength because they're looking at having someone who can play that fifth bowling option and can pick up some wickets. We've seen Mitch Marsh take wickets. Uh, we've seen him take a bag full 
in England in the last Ashes series. So That's true. that would be where the strength is. But I would I, my my leaning myself would be going Kawaja five and Green at six. Green. Oh look, I'm, I'm happy to put Green in at six. I 100 percent agree with that. I think you need that bowler. Now, Manus can bowl a couple overs of leg spin. Medium pace, too. Look, that, look, that's true. But in terms of throw the ball to green, bend your back, just see that the toes are at the nose, just get those England batsmen going, whoop, this is guy's not a part-timer. Then you bring these guys back, you know, any sort of time. Was quite, what about Travis Head? Now, he's played plenty of test cricket, and he is the incumbent. Yeah. This is the thing with Trav. So you think back to when he first came in, he got a bunch of runs about 40 to 60 and just couldn't get on with it That's true. from there. Couldn't pick it up. I don't think he's really got over that bit at the moment. I'm also a little bit concerned about the way after the first couple of Shield games where he really started well he did. and yeah. 200 in a one day out. It hasn't really clicked in the last game or two for him. So it's that whole thing of recent runs gets the selectors thinking. And so where he's dropped off, Kawhi just picked up another name to throw into the mix. Mix, Nick Madison. I was going to say Madison. He's been amongst the runs. He plundered us a pretty pretty decent New South Wales attack, which is a real shame, but, you know, good for Madison. He was the name that I was going to throw up. Now, I am leaning towards Kawaja because Madison, you know, he's played plenty of cricket, but you want to put him in the ashes, it, potentially on day one with the ball moving. Oh, I'm thinking maybe maybe two or t- test two or three. For, for Hearing Madison. him on the radio, he sounds much more prepared than he has in the past. So I would be happy with either of them, but I think they're going to go Kawaja. Look, I'm happy. I'm happy to lock in Woods. Uh, and as a specialist 12th man, look, I, I think you need to get Jai Richardson in and around the team. Uh, there's a, a report came out today that he may not be able to go back to Perth for whatever reasons. I didn't click in because it was going to make me angry. I think he's your 12th man because you want him there carrying the drinks. You want him in the bowlers' meetings. I just want him in the team somewhere. Yeah, and you look at the test he played against Sri Lanka a couple of years ago. Played really well. Has played well in the one-day side as well. I, I have no problems with him. I think you have you look at the bowlers that are behind that front four, and you've got guys who can really come in and do the job. So you've got Richardson, you've got Nisa, you've got Sean Abbott, you've got Scott Boland who started yeah, the season started really well. Fire. And you've got Mitch Swepson to come in and uh, pick up the role as the uh, spinner, or even come in as a second spinner if uh, Sydney's going to turn sideways from day one. Fingers crossed. Look, I'm happy with this 1-12. to 12. I think we've got the first game in the in the bag. We lost once in like 100 years in Brisbane. Can I get a quick five-test series preview? What's the end result going to be? I'm thinking 3-1. This English side is not necessarily the strongest that they've sent. I think there's some real question marks over their bowling attack. And there's some real key areas in the batting lineup that are really going to be under the microscope from day one. Their openers in particular are really going to be under pressure. I wouldn't be surprised if the conditions are right in Brisbane, Payne winning the toss, putting the palms in to bat. Stark, Cummins, Hazelwood with the ball swinging around in Brisbane with the humidity and everything. Risky. Okay. It, yeah, hey, look. We've, we've seen what bowling first in the look, it, it can certainly <laughs> it can do. North 200 and game over. But look, you heard it here first. Aussies 5-0. All right, Stegs, now that we've delivered a 5-0 whitewash to the Aussies by naming the unbeatable 11 plus 12th man, uh, we're going to talk about the shorter form of the game, the BBL, which actually starts on the 5th of December. Yeah, it's not like you to get your dates wrong, is no, it? No, look, it's not. We'll fix that up in post. It's all good. Now, look, before we get into the nitty-gritty, uh, is there any team that really stands out to you this season? Well, look, you want to you look at the squads, and there's always one side that stands out. The boys over in the West, the Perth Scorchers, they are looking strong again. And with the opportunity to possibly actually play some games in Perth uh, at the uh, new stadium there, it is a very good wicket for T20 cricket over there. So... I, I would be looking at them very strongly early on. Can I look, no arguments from me there. Look, I was going to mention that later on, so thanks to my thunder, no pun intended, <laughs> uh, about the uh, the games will be played in home states. Fingers crossed everything goes. There will be some games played, but we'll, we'll, just, we'll chuck that in the comments. It's all good. Look, for me, unfortunately, we have to bring up the Sixers. They're synonymous with it. They've won two in a row. You know, although it is funny because no matter how dominant they are, we seem to whack them once a season, which is always fun. Bowl them out for like 30. Alex Hales about 190 the other week. So, um, and we beat them today in the WBBL. So, Beautiful. Um, 
they're only here for my enjoyment. But uh, look, they'll be there or thereabouts. They've maintained every player they had last year. Plus, Tommy Curran comes back, which is a real kick in the pants for us. I hope they go really badly this year. Any other teams stand out to you, mate? Well, let me just... Um Oh. Jeez, you've done some research. While you do there's, that... There's nothing better that Wikipedia can do, let's put it that way. Look, that, that's true. While you do that, we're just going to throw to uh, Terry and see how he's doing. The only thing I hate more than cricket is you right now, Daniel. Sweet as, mate, as you were. Ah, yes. Melbourne Renegades. Came last last year. Awful, awful team. But they have made some very good pickups. Let me run through a couple for you. James Pattinson comes back down from Brisbane. Fantastic. We'll get a lot of wickets. Nick Manson goes from green to red. Look, when he was playing for the Sixers, he was a gun. One of the best players in the competition. Didn't work out for him at the Stars. You know, they played him in an unfamiliar role. Never really got stuck, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to see how he goes in red. And always handy with the ball, too, for a couple of Look, overs. that's true. But two international signings to have a look at. Uh, Unmuk Chand. First you know ever, no, I, I, look, I know him because we discussed it off field, off camera just quietly. Uh, first Indian player to ever play in the BBL. Which is a lovely thing to see, uh, particularly because how the BCCI have been uh, limiting players mm. playing in overseas competitions. So we'll see. Hopefully it opens the floodgates, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, the other one is Reese Topley. Now, Reese Topley probably isn't a name that you're familiar with. English bowler, very, very good T20 bowler. They have a knack of really producing them over there. The T20 Blast competition in the UK is an incredible quality and they really push it hard. So Topley and amongst a whole range of bowlers have really improved over the years and he is good. He's particularly good at the death. Uh, geez, they need it. They went for some runs. Look, speaking of runs, one player who didn't make many last season was Aaron Finch. Now, if the Renegades are to do anything in this competition, they need Finchie to fire. Yeah. But uh, look, they've also lost Hats Hatsuglu across to Perth which strengthens Perth uh, it does it does weaken the Renegades but I think the players you've you've mentioned and look Cameron Boyce still there who's been well he didn't play last year he was injured so that's a, that's, that's a relative in yeah uh, look for me mate I'm going to throw a smoky at you the Hurricanes now look they're yet to win a competition I think this might be their season now we went we did a heap of research beforehand only the final really looks like it'll be thrown out by international games the ODI start a couple of days after so that means that the Hurricanes are going to be at full strength where they usually lose Darcy Shaw and Matt Wade for extended periods if they stay fit and get runs I can't see many teams chasing down the 200s that they can put on well let's have a look at this this squad that you're looking at you're looking at Wade you're looking at Short you're looking at McDermott you're looking at Hanscom you're looking at Tim David who is one of those players who can come in at 5 or 6 and really hit the thing around Let's look at their bowlers. Nathan Ellis, Riley Meredith, Sandeep Lamachani. They're going to take some wickets. They're going to be tough to be. And, and Scott Boland as well. So you call them a smoky. I, I don't think they're a smoky at all. I think they're going to be right in the mix from the get-go. Look, for me, only one team is going to be better than that year, and that's the uh, lime green of the Sydney Thunder. Absolutely. Do you want to throw to Terry? See, is he okay? <sighs> one last time. Okay. I still hate cricket, Daniel. Thanks, Terry. Hey, look, just uh, just wrapping up, just back to the Thunder, mate. Uh, we haven't really gone out of our way to replace Cal Ferguson, who scored a lot of runs for us last season. Yep, yeah, it's always hard to replace a player like that, not only with his batting, but also as a skipper. And with the possibility that Kawaj is going to be in the test squad all the way through the summer, that's going to leave a little bit of a gap there. But I've got good faith in those young guys that the Thunder have. Matt Jilks having the opportunity to open, I think, is going to be big for him. He's played through the middle order. It's not necessarily his strength. It's definitely not. Like Sason with the field up. Yeah, so putting him in at the top of the order is going to be good. Jason Sanger, Ollie Davies. But then also you do have Hales and Billings coming back. And Saqib Mahmood, player from Lancashire, very good bowler. Has played with England uh, just in this summer gone, in the English summer. He will be one of the best bowlers in the tournament. You've heard it here first. You heard it. Best bowler in the tournament. Hey, guys. Welcome to another segment of Top Sport Tips. Um, look, what can I say? I went one from two this week. Uh, the big fella went two from two. Unfortunately, I thought Philadelphia would would, uh, would be able to cover Toronto, but they didn't get the players back that I thought they would. We bounced back, though. It's it's good that you know Top Sport are getting some cash 
back in their bank account because Dan and I are going to absolutely mug them off this week. Um, tip one for mine, the lock of the week is the Golden State Warriors to cover the line against the Detroit Pistons in Detroit. Um, look, it's it's going to be a good game. Detroit are playing really well. Their young core is coming together. Um, they're not going to have enough for Steph Curry and the Warriors, though. Steph's going to go absolutely mental, and they will cover that line comfortably. Absolutely comfortably. You could probably also throw Steph Curry to score more than 30 points in that game as well. Um, the second tip for mine that I have, the Brooklyn Nets to cover the line against the Orlando Magic on the same day. Um, look, Brooklyn are absolutely rolling at the moment. They want that top seed in the East. The Magic on the other end of the spectrum, not going so good at the moment. Brooklyn are going to cover that line on there. You could probably throw Kevin Durant for 25 points as well. Now, he's on a roll at the moment, and if you'd followed him, you would have made some serious cash this weekend. So, Dan, what are your tips? Thanks, Terry. It's good to see someone getting some correct for once. Uh, look, I well, stupidly last week tipped this week, meaning this week. So I'm going to have a double up of money-making opportunities tomorrow. Is the Pats dollar sixty-nine against Cleveland, of course, and I'm tipping the Seahawks to upset the Green Bay Packers at two forty-eight. I think both of those are money for jam, so get on it. I'm so confident in my football abilities and knowledge that I'm going to tip a second upset as I'm going to go the Philadelphia Eagles to beat the Broncos at two fifteen. I think that is right there for the taking. And depending on when this goes up, because I may or may not have something planned. This result may already be out there, but I'm going to go Timmy Zoo. I'm going to back our boy by stoppage. Check the odds. Top squad, of course, closer to. Uh, but look, you know it's going to win, so get on it no matter what it is. Thanks very much. Thanks, everyone, for joining in. Special thank you to Stegs for stepping in at last minute. Terry? You disappoint me. Look, just want to send a shout out to a good friends, Top Sport. Uh, check the odds, get on my bets, gamble responsibly, but you know, it's just going to win. Uh, look, uh, and also to Zero Fox Tees, who, look, Terry took the shirt with him uh, on his banishment, so I'm sure he's wearing that proudly. Uh, look, uh, we're going to give Terry the final word tonight, so Tez, it's over to you. The Barney Army! Barney Army! Barney Army! Oh!